you do that, when you go nuts, you should end up like a band, like you just in your own floor. It's like you can't go anymore. Just let it all out. Exhaust the body completely. Completely exhausted. You know, don't hold anything. Hold, don't hold anything back. Just let it all out. And then collapse. Yeah, I saw you on the floor next to me. I don't know. You let it all out. Let it all out and collapse. That's how you relax the, the bioenergetic tension in the body. Because it's, it's, it's neurotic holding patterns. It's, we're doing it. Does that make sense? Yeah. We're doing it. You're holding it. And you, the best way to release the holding is to exhaust the body. <laughs> just go nuts. You did a little bit of a, of a temper tantrum yesterday, right? And I just throw a little bit of temper tantrum. Kick, 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 turn your head, get it involved. Right? All your tension's up in your head, so that's why your head wanted to stay stiff. I just think. You throw your temper tantrum and the head is like this. And just constantly thinking, that's why. Yeah, and it shows in your movement. So, someone who doesn't want to let go, who saw my orgasm dance video? No orgasm dance? What does the orgasm dance look like? Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is, a, if you want to know a woman who orgasms, if, she's, if you go to a dance club, the girl that dances like this, she can have full orgastic release. The ones that are like, <laughs> I mean, they'll get a little, a little something, but if you want a girl that's like, ah, watch her dance. <laughs> the reason why, it's metaphoric, but it, it's, it's literal. It's so funny. Like I described yesterday, like a tight ass. Yeah. Really, you got a fucking tight ass. Letting go is the hands. Losing her head and grounded. She's willing to be earthly, grounded, sexual, as well as let go, let go of the ego, let go of the body, she's willing to let her head go, and just be free. <laughs> so when you, you do it right, she's gonna fucking let go. <laughs> so with you, like you your, your, your cheeks are red, and you got so, it's all held up right here. That's, and the reason we know that, got a band of tension right here. So you're charging and it stays right there. Bang. You're even kind of loose down here in your belly. You breathe. All that tension is here. So when you threw the temper tantrum, you know, if you look at, if you look at a child who throws a temper tantrum, which a temper tantrum is like, is a right. You try to throw a temper tantrum, just let them do it. It's a right as a human being to protest. It is, it's, it's the first protest. It's a temper tantrum. And if you want to have free thinking, creative children, give them the option to protest. Doesn't mean that they're going to get their way all the time, because the reason why they're protesting is because, like, no, you can't have ice cream for breakfast. So it doesn't mean that you give them the way, but you give them the right to protest. You want to protest? Don't tell them, oh, this is just my experience. Get up from there. Straighten up and don't make that noise. You want to protest? Protest. I'm not giving you ice cream for breakfast, but throw a temper tantrum. If you watch a child throw a temper tantrum, it's the whole body. You throw a temper tantrum. It was. Ah! Ah! Fuck you! Fuck you! You see the difference? Let the head go. Let it go. Shake your head out. It doesn't need to be involved all the time. The body's intelligent enough. It does a shitload without that being involved. Let it go sometimes. Let your head go. Your body, I mean, it's pumping blood, digesting food, creating new cells. Your woman might be making another human being inside. It's doing a shitload of stuff. <laughs> Without you having to think about it, we we'll become so attached, we can't let go. Let it go. <laughs> just one stuff. Just one stuff, fellas. Just one stuff. When you were just starting out, were you more tight? Because I feel like most of my tension. Thinking just about everything, just 
to a point where I know what I'm what I want what I'm doing, and then I'm sure of myself because I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure of myself yet. So I just constantly yeah. try to figure it out. Well, I'll share my experience and then offer some insight. I was just as tense as you were. Butterflies in my stomach. I tend to hold more tension, like kind of like Otto does, in the belly. I had butterflies for probably a year, maybe longer. I could not breathe deep. My, I'm not as heady as you may be, but I held a lot of tension and was here. I actually, that's when I discovered that I had the bacterial infection. It kind of makes sense because I reduced my, the energy in that part of my body. It was, it was, it was, it was malnourished. You know how you felt like, wow, blood is coming here now? Yeah. Well, imagine, which you don't have to imagine, you have. For decades, or for, in my case, a year, not getting the nourishment. The Chinese call it qi. A lot of people you know, say that's bullshit. Well, call it whatever you want. Blood, I, I don't care. You don't have to call it qi. But there's no qi in that area. Because I didn't have any money. Not only did I have any money, your survival is like, I mean, you're, you're proceeding from the most base emotion, the most, what you need, you know, high, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, safety and security, primal association, I mean, self-actualization, which is like what we're all after, comes from the version itself, is way up at the top. If you don't have what Maslow describes as safety and security, then you're, you're, there's no way. You know, and if you're suffering, if you're moving from a place of safety and security, the sympathetic nervous system is on. Your your adrenals are fry are firing, and you're you're doing the best that you can to control the situation with your head, you know, while shutting off the body, because the body is more attuned to pleasure. The body's more attuned to relaxing, uh, parasympathetic, rest and digest. The brain is very sympathetic. So my experience was that I was in a sympathetic state like you for quite a few years, not knowing what to do, and I'm just freaking doing. Just going, 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 you know. My family, you know, was raising my daughter and my, I had my wife, we just bought a mortgage, we just, and uh, just started my own business. And I, like, I, I, can't, I don't have money for like, food. I can't, much less a mortgage. Yeah, it was not survival. The turning point was when a friend shared a CD with me. I, actually, I could say that the foundation for that, for my success, or ability to get out of that, was I brainwashed myself with Brian Tracy's Love Factor CD. I listened to it over and over and over again, just like positive affirmation. But then a friend shared Holosync with me. Have you ever heard me talk about Holosync? Yeah. Holosync meditation? He said, I didn't know anything about meditation. I was like, dude, I try to meditate. I can't even stop thinking of, like, for two seconds. He was like, just listen to these CDs, man. Just do it. Just put it on once a day. And, just, and you put it in, you listen to it. And it's just, it just sounds like rain. Rain and wind. I'm like, dude, OK, well, I trust you, so I'm going to do it. So I listened to these CDs for every, every single day for about 30 days. And normally my behavior was neurotic, you know, I'm thinking, I'm going, I'm doing, uh, and it's always coming from a place of nervousness, it's always coming from a place of survival. So one day I'm sitting down, after I've been doing it for a while, I'm sitting down on the couch, and there's no tension in my body, I'm breathing, relaxed, and I'm not worried about anything. And I freaked out. I was like, oh my god, Colleen, am I getting lazy? What's going on? I, I felt so weird because I was relaxed. I, there was no tension in my body, and I didn't know why. And, I, and not only that, because what happens is the neurotic pattern is like this. If there is no tension in your body, your brain's going to be like, we better create some more tension. Because you're, you're in a constant sympathetic state, and you become used to it. You become used to it. You know, you, you're, you're there all the time, so when you move out of it, or if you, or if you have an opportunity to move out of it, besides getting hammered, you drink, uh, everybody's relax then. When you move out of it, you freak out because you're like, oh my god, I just let go. It's almost like you let go of the reins. What you think you're doing is holding on to the reins of the horse. 
And when you realize that you dropped the reins of the horse, what would you do? You freak out, this goddamn animal. This animal is taking over. And that's what happened. Through the meditation, the, the jockey, if you follow my analogies, the jockey let go of the reins and the horse started galloping. But the horse was a fucking beautiful, brilliant beast that knew where to go and what to do. So the minute that the jockey realized that he let go of the, the reins, he freaked out. He was, he was going good. He was like, hey, that's a nice ride. Everything's feeling good. <gasps> I don't have the reins! Freaked out and did whatever he could do to grab it again. And then he realized, the jockey goes, wait a second, the horse is doing a pretty goddamn good job. <laughs> and he started riding again. And anytime I stopped meditating, I started going like this, trying to grab the reins again. And you know what happens when I grab the reins? The horse, I'm stressed out because I'm trying to steer this fucking horse. The horse is not able to do what it wants to do because the horse is brilliant and the horse knows better than the jockey because the horse understands the terrain. You follow my analogies or am I losing you? No. So through the meditation, I was able to let go. And when I let go and let the horse steer the direction, take me where I was gonna go, and it was scary as fuck because the horse was asking me to do some weird shit. Like the horse told me, the horse said, hey Elliot, uh, you don't have enough money for bread right now, but I think you can come up with $2,000 a month to pay off the credit card debt. And you have a mortgage. Oh, your wife's pregnant. The horse told me this. And I was like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Jackie would be like, you goddamn horse. That doesn't make any sense if you grab the reins. But because I was able to let go, the jockey didn't look, try to grab the reins, and the horse intuitively guided the situation and said, yes, let's do this. I'm, I have no credit card debt. $2,000 a month. Fuck could come up with $2,000 a month? I couldn't. I had a new business, a new family, had a mortgage. Couldn't pay for anything. The, whor the horse saved me. <laughs> Did anybody get this? Or am I just uh, like smoking weed? I know. <laughs> <laughs> the point is that you've got to find a way to trust the horse, the animal, the beast in you. It's the only way I can describe it right now. By letting go of the reins. And it's scary. Because you've been holding on to the reins for so long. But you're doing a lot of right things. You, you've got, you're clearly creative and intuitive. But get comfortable letting go. And the only way I could have let go was with meditation. I'm not selling anything. I'm not an affiliate. The whole thing. I just get, I, to be completely honest, it's what got me to relax and let the horse carry the situation. And now my animal carries everything. That's why I'm so weird in a lot of ways. Because like, it just doesn't do fuck the horse. The horse goes, whatever the horse wants to do. You know? Every once in a while I have to like pull back because the horse will embarrass me. Like, they, they can't, they can't do that on camera. <laughs> People will really make fun of you. You don't want that. Uh, but, more, but essentially that's where I'm at right now. Is, and and I'm, I can empathize with you because I know what it's like. It's intense trying to get things to happen, and thinking that you've got to steer the horse, you've got to be the man, you've got to tighten up, you got to, all that shit is just going to make you tired and make the horse pissed off. And this is ancient shit. It sounds kind of like, oh, like mystical, airy fairy, weird, alien hell shit. But this is like, and I'm not a Christian. I quote the Bible quite often because there's some pretty good shit in there. It's kind of like, well, who was I talking to? Mike the other day? He's like, yeah, where Christ says, be like the birds of the field uh, who are fed, regardless of what they do. Won't you think I feed you? And be like the lilies who never toil nor spin, but yet I feed them with the rays of the light. And this, it's all poetic stuff. You know, it's all Jesus stuff. But it's like, that's some pretty wise shit. I've experienced it. You know? Not just read quoting quoting scripture. I mean, a lot of people are just quote scripture. It's like, yeah, but you have a neurotic, fucked up life. You quote scripture. 
This is my experience. My experience is when Jesus said that, you like the birds. You like this. The flowers don't work. Easier said than done. Breathing deep, dancing like a maniac, crazy ass country music, meditating, being free is essentially, metaphorically, letting go of the reins. You gotta find a way to do that. You'll, you'll find what works for you. But my experience has been meditation and bioenergetic exercise. Tempo tantrums. The minute I think I, I'm holding on, that's what I talk about this all the time. Holding patterns. That's what I gotta release. Kick and scream, get it out, laugh. The body be free. Let the horse guide them. Take you on a take you on a journey. So, amen. <laughs> now, is that helpful though? I mean, you're, you're in a situation where do you still live at home with your parents? Yeah. It's more than helpful. Hmm? More than helpful. If I can offer you. These just, these just ideas. I just want like to say, what is it? Hey, it's just, it's just, just advice, advice, fellas. It's just advice, fellas. Do what the fuck you want to do. <laughs> Same thing, just advice, just ideas. Share it with you. One of the things I find helpful is to put yourself in a more comfortable situation. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> Try making the shit even more of a move out of your parents' house. Now, huh? Yeah. I feel like that even con contributes to it. You know? And you're like, how the fuck do you get out of here? If I can only get out of here, it's just, it's almost like, you got a car? I'll probably say for me, yeah. What do you mean yeah. car? I have a truck. What do you mean truck? Give me a truck, bro. Let me see a truck. You work at a gym, right? You got a shower? Yeah. You got a shower? You got a car. What do you want? What are you willing to do? With a lot of times, when you jump off the deep end, that's when you learn how to swim. A friend said to me the other day, she said, uh, <clears throat> I jump and then learn how to fly. And a lot of times, that's the only way. In nature, you look at like birds, eagles, when the, when the, when the mother recognizes that the babies have wings, you know what they do? Sometimes. There you go. Sometimes. I've done it, I've done it a lot of times, like I just told you. I quit my job with no clients, had a mortgage, had a family, and I was just like, I'm jumping out. And it was nerve-wracking, you know, it was nerve-wracking, but it's the only way. Sometimes when there's a back door, or sometimes when it's still a little comfortable, but it's like, it's still your, you're still kind of like sucking the tip. You know, you're still a little, a little too comfortable to, to take some risks and make big things happen. So my experience has been, make it really uncomfortable. Right, Chris? There's no doubt that. It's getting a little comfortable right now doing some things, but that's what life is about. That's what growing up is about. It's more comfortable shit. We live in a culture that's all about comfort, security, safety. <laughs> That's the biggest lie they sold us. There's nothing safe. There's nothing safe about living on this rock that's spinning at millions of miles an hour and going around a ball of fire. You really think the insurance is gonna take care of you? You're not gonna be fucking safe. So, fuck safety and security. That's what this country is based on. Liberty, freedom. That's where you get your safety. Knowing that you can do whatever you want to do. 